Hello everybody, it's Donnie Price with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge and I am here to show you how to tie the jacked up sardina. So basically this is our pattern right here. This is good for catching roosterfish, mai mai, skipjack, everything that we offer pretty much. Um, it's also really good for anything that eats other fish that are smaller than them. So largemouth bass, striped bass, uh, redfish, it's a great pattern. But lots of motion in the back, great profile, and uh, you can match it to just about any, any fish that you see. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, this pattern takes a lot of time, and I apologize for it, but it's a great pattern. It lasts a long time, the movement is really, really good. So what we're going to start with, with this one, this size is a three-aught hook, right? So this is a little bit of a longer shank hook, it's black nickel, um, very sharp very long lasting. So we're going to start with some very big uh, white thread. We're going to get a little bit of a base going on here, right? And this fly has taken me about three years to perfect and I don't want to act like I'm some sort of a genius or anything like that, but um, basically this is just the culmination of a lot of different flies that I've used in the past. So we're actually going to put a little bit of glue on the back side of this deal right here. And then we're going to take a piece of 40 pound monofilament and stick it right on the back. Secure that in really, really well. And let the glue do what it's going to do. So notice I've got the curve of this up like this. Basically I learned how to do this just tarpon fishing, right? but it's not really a tarpon fly. It's got a really, really long tail on it, but we want to keep that tail from fouling, right? So our tail is going to be about that long right there. We're going to stick that down on the shank of our hook. Secure that in really well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go way back here Take a bobbin, put a hole through that. Then we're going to go with a bigger needle, make that hole a little bit bigger. We're going to take this monofilament, and run it through that hole. monofilament. So anyway, we're going to take this, put our fingers back in this like this, and pinch this down to where it kind of crimps that monofilament a little bit. And that's going to make it to where it kind of lays back, right? So what this does is it extends our body out a little bit, gives us a lot more movement, but it makes it to where that rabbit zonker strip doesn't, doesn't foul around the hook, right? So lots of motion in this. All right, so some other things that we can do with this is add some of this bigger... Uh, big game fiber on the sides kind of helps stiffen it up just a little bit add a little bit more to the body of the back end of this fly give it a little bit of better of a, a fuller profile right kind of work that a little bit like that then um, these fish are usually like a, a tan color on the top and then white on the bottom and you can vary this to whatever you're fishing for and with but I like to throw a little bit of a sharpie uh, tan color on the top side of this All right okay after that I like to add a little bit of flash and I mean rooster fish are pretty they're very smart fish and if you add too much flash, then you're really going to mess things up. But inside of the body, you can get away with quite a bit. So this is just a silver kind of bait fish, UV. And that's what we're left with with that. All right, so from there, we're going to start making the head of this fly, right? And we want something bulky, right? So it's going to push water. And there are a couple of different ways that, uh, that we can finish this fly out. <clears throat> we can either silicone the top of it if we really want to push a lot of water or make that bait kind of kick over side to side. Um, we're tying this mainly for rooster fish. Rooster fish, I mean, 
you're pulling that fly as fast as you can hand over hand and um, the fish are faster but they don't really care about too much side to side motion in my experience they want kind of fine movement which this rabbit tail gives really really well um, if i wanted to make this more of a my my pattern it's pretty simple it's just a simple conversion from <clears throat> from leaving it like a hollow fly on the front to um, to actually uh, silicone in the top and making it to where it will really catch that water and, and go side to side. Um, my my are a lot easier to fool than rooster fish, but uh, most of the time anyway. Dorado, a little bit of a dumber fish. Rooster fish, pretty smart. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put this uh, chartreuse color on the top, right? We're going to secure that in after we flatten it out, right? So the next thing we're going to do is take this back in two different stages like this, right? And this is kind of a messy pattern. There's nothing that's going to be perfect with it. But we want a little bit of that yellow color <clears throat> in the top of this thing. And uh, whenever you look at these sardines, you, you see there's, there's a little bit of a yellow in it. The sizes of these things vary. Um, and you can vary your, your pattern with that size. Just bigger, smaller hook, and then uh, all of that. So from here out to, to, uh, to the top, to the front of this thing, it's pretty much the same thing. Just that so I'm going to vary the color a little bit here white still goes on the bottom for sure flatten it out lock it in if you don't get it right the first time just rearrange it go over go over it again now I'm going to go to more of a um, more of an olive color Sardinas that we're seeing right now are, are a little bit more of this color. This is just fake fur. I like to keep the extra and, uh, and make dubbing out of it later on. It's very good for brushes. Flatten it out. Lock it down. A couple extra turns. Pull it back on the top like this. Lock down that bottom. And you want to go to the front of it. You don't want to you don't want to get that leading edge right there. Otherwise, it really it really hampers the, the motion of the bait. And that's kind of what you want. You want it to just kind of breathe. Right? Even if you're sitting um, have the fly sitting still in the water column, you want it to undulate and, and breathe. All right, I'll probably just fast forward through this part. I mean, it's just, it's pretty redundant. Okay, so this is gonna be the last course of this stuff that I use. I'm gonna start off with my olive. I'm going to bulk this up a little bit towards the front. So a little bit more of this material than what I've used in the past. Pull out the guard hairs. Throw the excess away. Flatten it out. Lock it down. Get some more of this white. Pull the guard hairs. <clears throat> Flatten it, lock it down. All right, so this is our last course of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more flash, but I'm gonna use some yellow. And this is uh, ice wing fiber. Um, it's good stuff. Hairline is making some really, really good materials right now. Uh, they've 
really up their game over the last couple of years but basically I'm going to put that into about three to four inch pieces right I'm going to lock it down on this side and pull it up and over lock it down on the other side so I've got yellow going through both sides of it you can kind of pull the excess of that off <clears throat> I can also put a little bit more of this um, this UV silver um, ice wing, the same material. And you want to be careful with this, not use too much of it, but basically I'm just going to throw that on the bottom. Lock that in. Pull it back. Pull back the top, just like what we've done in the past. Separate that bottom off, lock in the top, and then lock in the bottom. From here we whip finish. Trim off your excess, put a little bit of glue on that front side so it doesn't come unraveled just in case you didn't get a very good knot. <clears throat> and then if you're a dog owner, you know what this is. Um, it, it's a dog brush. It's about the best thing that I've found to be able to lay this stuff out and kind of deal with it in a, in a manner that makes it make sense, right? So just give that a few strokes right to the back like that. All right, now then, as far as putting the eyes on, I like to just hit a little bit of zap a gap where it's not going to mess with the, the bend of the hook. So up over the shank and then grab a couple of 3D eyes. And we don't want to compress this <clears throat> because the uh, kind of the fluffiness of, of this fly is what gives it its, uh, its body. So. If you don't get them perfect, don't worry about it. Those fish can't see both sides of this thing. And truthfully, I think that the more jacked up this fly looks, the better off it is. So, all right. So I'd, I'd mentioned before that this is a pretty good longevity fly. Um, if you just leave these eyes <clears throat> glued in like that with super glue, they're gonna come off pretty quick. So what I figured out how to do is um, even if you want a hollow fly and you don't want to, to create too much bulk on the head, uh, silicone is a really, really good option. So basically you just take this off like this, and this is just something I got at Home Depot. It's GE. It's just regular silicone. Um, it, it doesn't have to have a fly tying, you know, name brand on it to be good. Just a, a good silicone that you'd get from a, from a hardware store. So basically just squeeze a little bit of that out, bring it up to your bobbin, right? And what you wanna do is start it at the beginning of this eye and then just take it straight back. You wanna gang a little bit of that up before that, uh, before that eye. And basically what that's gonna do is just make sort of a leading edge to where water doesn't get underneath it and kind of mess it up. The other thing that you can do with this is add a little bit of flash to the front. So like rooster fish, it's been my experience that to have something dumbed down a little bit um, is kind of a little bit better. They, they, get, they get pretty... Uh, pretty sensitive to having too much flash but if you're going after bass or something like that you can use a little bit of glitter and just shake a little bit on there that little bit right there is not going to kill you as far as rooster fish are concerned either and kind of whenever it's sitting there glimmering in the water sometimes you get a pretty good reaction to it but I like to take the excess of that stuff off of the eyes, right? 
and just make it to where you have a good profile fly like that. All right, so <clears throat> that's 15 minutes worth of, of this video. I apologize for it taking so long. However, it is a, it's a, it's a pretty complicated fly. Play around with it. There's really no bad way of making these. Um, even whenever they look really, really bad, <laughs> the fish really seem to like the motion of it a lot. Um, and they, they just, they invoke that predatory, you know, instinct of, of smashing something that seems like it can't get away from them. So again, I'm Donnie with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge. I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you have, please subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and um, share us with other people. And um, please offer any comments that, that you uh, see valuable. So hope you have a great day and I hope this, uh, this helps you out a bunch. Thanks.